Correct. First of all, I'd like to go on record that the bar has been set very high, so I'm going to try to live to the expectations of the room. And secondly, uh, I want to go on record because we are starting a Coder Dojo at NCI. So you miss us <laughs> on that one. So, and thirdly, just for the educator of that, uh, you were saying that you were quite concerned on students know, know, oh, knowing too much when they go to college to study computer science. I want to meet those students who actually feel that they feel too much. Uh, I, f I believe that there is no such thing as a student who knows too much. It's probably the lecturer who is not pushing the boundaries. I want to have those students in first years, those ones really motivated and who have the difference, who understand the difference between using a computer and programming a computer. That's totally different. Texting fast is not using a computer. Uh, in the UK, before I start a presentation, there is a lost generation, they call it, because they had to put a curricula computer programming. Steve Forber has just started that, finished uh, with the Royal Society, trying to save a generation of teenagers who thought that using Excel was learning how to use computers. It was dreadful, so anyway. So all that, and to start my presentation. So I'm gonna be talking about the cloud. Uh, unless you have been in a desert island for the past five years, or you've been really away, uh, you haven't heard about the cloud. I mean, these days, it's been everywhere. Anything that you tend to use is no longer standard software or hardware. It's cloud-enabled. And, and to me, and you have to pardon my French here, to a certain extent, cloud computing is like teenage sex. Okay? Because not even half of the people who claim they are doing it, they are actually doing it. Okay? Of those who actually are doing it, many are doing it wrong. And the worst part, they are gonna suffer the consequences for the rest of their lives. <laughs> okay, so from that perspective, what I would like is to bring a perspective of what we are doing to educate that. I cannot claim ownership of that analogy because it was Alan Kay uh, a while ago talking about object-oriented programming, but I, I think cloud computing hasn't changed. Okay, so if we can get the, the presentation now, it should be going on. It was in a very, it wasn't in PowerPoint on purpose, just to make sure it was going to be projected right, but it's, PDF seems to be plain. Anyway, so I'm gonna be talking about that side of cloud computing and making sure that, of course, I didn't put it on the cloud because potentially it wasn't gonna work. So, yeah, here we go, that's the PDF there. Okay, great. So, if we go to the first slide, please. They are, they are revealing all the tricks in the presentation, so that's, that's like when you're a magician, you should be doing that. Anyway, okay, here we go. So, okay, so the title doesn't give much on this. It's the Cloud Leaders, thanks for Paul for putting that. My name is Horacio Gonzalez Vélez. That will come handy when you go to Spain next time, and. These are the details, okay? So, if I can make this change. The old way always works. Okay, I'm gonna be talking about some background about cloud computing and then what we are doing actually in the Cloud Competency Center in terms of programs, research, and our advisory board. So, no academic presentation would be complete if I don't give you the definition from the textbook. The textbook definition of cloud computing was coined in 97 by an economist. And what he said was that cloud computing uh, entails computational resources where the boundaries are determined by economic factors rather than technical limits. And he even talked about on-demand computing, software as a service, 
and internet as a platform. So if you believe in Wikipedia, you can actually check the, the definition, but actually there is a paper there that seems to back that up. But if you start doing research, you may find similar definitions that go back even to the 60s. And the reason, we'll see why. Uh, again, in, a, in a, any decent presentation, you will have to quote an analyst at least. So I will take Gardner here. Uh, Gardner, a couple of years ago, they say that there were some game changers in this business in cloud. They, they said that this year, at least 20% of businesses will own no IT assets. That's worldwide. Okay? Interesting. Then even more, for next year, they expect that there will be more mobile phones accessing the internet than PCs. Standard, we've seen that. Not, my, not many surprises. And thirdly, that which is very important for you, people that are actually working in companies, in organizations, that any IT business case will include carbon remediation costs. So, not many surprises, TCO, mobility, green computing, yeah, that's, that's Garner. Garner is saying that that's what it's expected. We, we are hoping to see that. But the cynical side of me started to do some research and said that it seems to be that I have seen that movie before. In fact, uh, in 2002, the very same analyst, Garner, said that grid computing was exactly in that peak. It was actually at the top of the web. Services was going to save the industry because 2002, if you may recall it, it was just after the combust, so everything was changing. So is there anything there actually behind that part? Or it's just the emperor's new clothes, I will call it. Because for those of us who have been a number of times around the block, we know that virtualization was hardly invented with cloud computing. Everyone thinks that it's cool, but IBM MVS, the V stands for virtualization, and it's hardly new, it was in the 70s. Used in the 70s and actually incorporated in the, in the 60s. Software as a service, it's not new. ASPs, the A, it's application service providers. It were in the 90s. They started with the dot com offering software through the internet. You pay subscriptions, okay? Or with more gray hair, service bureaus. Sears, interesting enough, their first business was selling computer times as part of their systems in service bureaus. And just a couple of months ago in the US, Sears again announced that they are selling cloud computing. History again, service bureaus. Oh, going back, think clients, NCs and Java stations in the 90s, or dump terminals, VD100s. So the internet, so is there anything there? I do believe so. There is a number of things that can be connected, but they include realistically some education in, in this side. So we have three axes. The definition is here, it's service models. You have software as a service, platform as a service, and infrastructure as a service. The different kinds of uh, clouds, you can have private, community, hybrids, and publics, and then, which is even more important, is the characteristics to the, deploy those models and the service. So pooling, elasticity, self-service, measure service, and, and the rest. And clearly, I cannot cover this here, because what we do at the Cloud Competency Center, it's basically trying to entangle this, trying to have some light in that, that. And the idea of this, it's the vision of the creation of this new center is basically create a center for excellence in learning and research. And what is this? I mean, what, why yet another one in cloud computing? And because there is really a need to educate on that front. So 
everyone was afraid clearly to tell the emperor that he didn't have any clothes. Yeah? So it was just one. And after doing our research, our market research here, we came to the conclusion we can prove that a program like the one that we're offering, these masters that they started this week, it's one of the few worldwide that focus on this growing area. Interesting enough. Uh, uh, this is, it was said in the Irish Times in, a few weeks ago, and that's, that's a fact. And we can back up that. We will see who is actually helping us to model that. Some of you are here in the room, and people internationally are helping us on that. So that's the learning side. We have dedicated facilities uh, in our campus in the IFSC. So the painters are just out of that. They are literally, it's, the paint is still wet in that. And we are doing some research. We intend to focus on this. We call it research. All academics, we think to believe that it's, it's research, of course. But there are areas of interest, cloud security. The first time you talk to anyone in a company who actually believes or thinks about the cloud, they will say, it's insecure. And that's exactly the same guy who has a post-it with the password. Yeah, you, I'm sure you have never come across that, but there seem to be people that have a password yeah, for the system with a stick yeah, post-it there. That's a person who actually challenges the security in the cloud. Anyway, infrastructure provisioning, governance and compliance, high performance computing, not everything will be in the cloud. Yeah, we know, but it's structural parallelism, typically patterns, data intensive applications, big data, cloud economics. How do you actually market that? How do you, do you charge for models? So read us areas of interest. Uh, we have an advisory board. Of course, we put the academic side. So these guys say that it's unique. Can they back that up? It doesn't get much better probably than these universities, but let's put it in context. So we have uh, the head of the advisory board is a person by the name of Jeffrey Ullman. If you did computer science as your first degree, chances are that you have used at least one of his books, textbooks. Uh, another Luminary, it's John Hopcroft from Cornell. Uh, Michael Franklin, he uh, sells his company as part of the EMC deal on big data. Armando Fox, UC Berkeley. So a couple of small universities in Silicon Valley, Stanford and Berkeley, and Cornell, one of the Ivy Leagues as well. It's actually part of our academic board. So that's the sort of advisors that they are backing this effort and our programs. Okay, and in addition to that, we have industry here in Ireland, okay, uh, helping us to set up the programs, namely the who's who in I, like IBM, Dell, Microsoft, the big one, the big names, but also, and much more important, SMEs. Okay, so after all this commercial, you will be wondering now, where do I plug in? So what can I do? What's in for me? Interesting enough, we will have next year at least 20 graduates eager to work for you for free. Because as part of the program, the idea we are claiming industrial links and real world scenarios and all that. So the idea of that is to put graduates working in real scenarios, in real world problems on the cloud, porting applications, look, looking at uh, cloud models, looking at uh, virtualization, at real companies, whether SMEs or major corporations, and working on that. So if you're interested, happy to entertain any questions, you can call us, hopefully not from that blue Founder. And last but not least, there is a free, free as in beer, a lecture next week with Jeffrey Ullman. So Jeffrey, it's coming to Ireland, the first time, not on holidays, so he's there. Uh, just, again, 
my hat of NCI. He's not touring Ireland and happened to be at NCI that day. He's coming to NCI especially to cut the ribbon at the Cloud Competency Center and give a keynote talk. So it, did, it wasn't like he was passing to, uh, I don't know, in his way to Malaysia or somewhere. He's coming especially to Dublin to help us with the opening of the Cloud Competency Center. And if you're wondering again, is that the Jeffrey Ullman of, yes, he is the one of the Dragon Book, the computer science, the automata theory, the design analysis of algorithms, the database book, the baseball player, the ML programming, if you're functional programmers, and the list goes on and on, okay? So, if you are interested, free, as in beer, next week, next Thursday, 2.30 p.m. at the campus. And that's pretty much me. Thank you very much for listening. There is a question there. Yes, we are. Uh, we have a couple of our associate faculty, people who actually teach at uh, NCI and are working on that. Uh, but I would be definitely very interested if you have a couple of pointers to Cloud Security Alliance on that because it's one of our priorities. We have a module on Cloud Security and an advanced one. So yes, we are. And we want to hear more from you. I don't know if you're involved in CSA. I'm just aware that I'm not sure No, but we are, we are one of our uh, associate lecturers, Jared Carstensen. He's part of that. He wrote literally one of the textbooks in the area. And we're working with them. Thanks. Thank you very much indeed. For Thank you. Very